Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so this is going to be about, I'd like to say, to move blind. Um, I don't work there anymore, but I'm a resident speaker. So if I don't cover everything, Angie's going to help me out with uh, some prop notes. She's got some prop notes. Um, well, that's Sight for the Blind. It's been going a few years. How many years do you think it's been going? Peter, you can keep uh, on this one. Hundreds, somebody said over there. Uh, we've got any advance on a hundred? It's more. 150? Yeah, close to nearly 150 years it's been going. Uh, and it's gone through quite a few changes since then. I mean, it started, when it started off, it was just for men. That's nice, isn't it? Um, <laughs> And it was, uh, they promoted, they didn't promote um, independence, they just helped blind people make baskets, mostly. Um, and they also give them a stipend, they give them like a shilling a week, a shilling a week. So that was a lot of money back then, a hell of a lot of money. Um, so it's gone through different iterations, I had a weird name back then as well, a really strange name. Look it up if you can, I can't remember it because it's so long. Um, so it's gone through a, a, lot of re, a lot of incarnations since then, so uh, they started helping out women, of course, which is always a bonus. Um, they've had different centres, they had one up Scope and Moor, one on Queen's Road, one in town on uh, Cowan Green, um, and then uh, Ward's End upstairs, up then three flights of rickety stairs, I mean, that, that horrible lift that just nobody was wanting to go in. Um, and then they moved to Clare Road. Clare Road about 2009, 2009, um, they opened the Clare Road Centre. Uh, and that was a good move, I think. That was a positive move for the society. Things were going upwards. Um, we worked there for quite a few years, looking after several groups. There were six different social groups there. We were helping people with their independence, giving information. But it just got to a bit of a stalemate, it got a bit stale. So two years ago, we, uh, we got a grant, uh, some, some funding, to have a, um, um, uh, a group come in to see a consultation, thank you, uh, a consultation, future focused consultation, to see what we could do for the future to support more people, see what, what we were doing right, and what we might have been doing wrong. Things to change for the future to make it a much, much better place, to make it more wide ranging and to support more, many more people. And that consultation, that ended up um, middle of last year, and what came from that was that um, these, these, kind of, these people, they talk to visually impaired people in the community, they talk to people who work with visually impaired people, families of visually impaired people. So it's all focused around the people who need the services. And what they found from that is that um, what they wanted to get was a service that was supporting visually impaired people to, to independence, rather than, um, rather than an organization that supported elderly people, because that was the perception there was just for older people, just afternoon groups for older people. It wasn't, it was more than that, but that's what the perception was. So the idea was to expand it from that and to get more, more people, more ages, uh, more facilities. Just getting a, a, a quick prompt woman. Yeah, so one, another thing that came from it was um, they wanted to get more information for visually impaired people, such as um, getting leaflets, getting uh, support from um, people that knew what they were doing, um, information to promote independence for visually impaired people. Fairly much seen what the uh, visually impairment team from the social services are doing but just in information, um, just to help support them. Okay, then we've got more social opportunities. Yeah, I wanted to promote more social opportunities. So rather than just visually impaired people coming to the centre, they wanted to promote things where visually impaired people could go out and about, meet new people, 
do more things around Colwardale and further, further afield. Um, facilitating that, so helping people to do that, show them how they can do it, and then letting them do it themselves, that sort of thing. So they're just in independence again. Yeah, uh, uh, another thing they wanted was, uh, uh, instead of just a newsletter, we used to do a newsletter. Um, and it was okay, it was a new newsletter, but we only kept it down to one, maybe two pages. Wasn't much you could put in there, so they wanted to change that to having a different format, having a magazine. So now the Blind Society published a quarterly magazine for visually impaired people that outlines all the uh, upcoming events for the society, interesting uh, things for visually impaired people, new gadgets, new technology. Um, anything else? It's called Book Count. Oh, and the, the magazine's called Book Count. But they also wanted this in different formats. So it's not just printed, large print. You can actually get electronic format. On request, you can get it in Braille if you want. Um, and it's also on, if anybody knows how the talking news, they have it as well. The Talking News, Scotland Talking News is an organisation who put the local articles from the local newspapers onto tape, send them out on a little pen drive for nothing. It's all done for free. But they also have outlook on there for us. That's really nice. Yeah, so the, the, uh, the consultation it also came up with a five year programme, so it can't be done overnight. Changes, big changes like this place, um, it, it, like we intend, can't be done overnight. So they said, do it in stages, do it over five years. So from start to finish, they want everything up and running, in place, five years. That's not going to be the finish, of course, but we want to get it so that all the things covered in the consultation will be covered within these five years. They went to the board, which used to be the committee, um, and they said, can we have money for this? And they said, yeah, go for it. So there's funding there, ready for it. They applied for funding from National Lottery, got quite a lot of money from the National Lottery, which is really good. So um, it's, it's totally self-funding, this charity, by the way. The Blind Society don't get any funding from anywhere else. They don't get it from Guide Dogs, the RNIB, from Calderdale. And if you send a cheque to the RNIB thinking it's going to get to us, we have to send it to the RNIB and we don't get it. So please make sure if you're giving a donation to us, it's to the Halifax Society for the Blind. Yeah, so um, the other thing that they did was they got more staffing. So we got management now, the manager there, he has huge experience in supporting visually impaired people. He's worked for Kirkley Social Services, he's, uh, he's got a degree in social work, um, but he's also visually impaired himself. His wife's still blind. So you've got to be one to know one sometimes, and he does, he really does. And he cares so much about uh, visually impaired people um, uh, and trying to get independence from visually impaired people. A, a great advocate for that. But as well as a new manager, we've got other staff there. So we've doubled the hours that staff are doing the forward facing, the, the staff that work with the visually impaired people, more than doubled the hours to help support these people. Yep, there's a, more than just the paid staff though. There's a volunteer scheme, so one of the staff that we employed was a volunteers manager. Um, and this is the manager who manages volunteers. So this scheme is to get volunteers in to help support visually impaired people. And these can be visually impaired people themselves. You have to know what to be with, you know? Um, so they know how to support. People who are visually impaired people that have gone through it, that have wore the t-shirt, they know how to support the people who are newly visually impaired people. So they're the great people to act as volunteers at the Blind Society. So Faye, our volunteers manager, she called this Faye, she's the one that's going to help um, train these volunteers, um, help 
set them in the right place uh, and uh, support the volunteers to support our members, to support visually impaired people, which is uh, amazing. Oh yeah, we used to do a home visiting service years ago, and it was, a, it was quite good as a home visiting service. Uh, although, um, that again got a bit stale. Um, we started it again a few years ago, just for newly uh, registered people, but that's been expanding now. So we're going to have a, a home visiting service to visit people who can't come to us, basically, to help support them. So if they have needs, we'll get somebody to go out to them, we volunteer, uh, to go out to them and look after their needs, help support them into the community. We've got new groups as well. There's one of them, a uh, bowling group. They go bowling at the Halifax Bowling Centre. Not crown bowling, not green bowling. This is 10 pin bowling. It's great stuff. Um, so young people, they love it. Um, Blinders, funny name. I had a different name, but it, it was a bit of a name. Yeah, so they have a t-shirt, and they, they're actually in a league. They're in a bowling league, not just playing against other visually impaired people, they're playing against sighted people as well. So they're in a, they're a, they've got their own team that's got a, a league. Um, they meet once a week, is it, Peter? Every Monday, yeah. Every, every Monday. Uh, there's also... Um, a dining out group, so a group of people that meets and go to different restaurants all around Colderdale. Um, they are called Leo, Local Eating Out. Uh, so uh, that, that's quite popular. Uh, they've been to, I think, seven different restaurants so far, so they meet once a month as well. Uh, there's also a group for teenagers that's been set up the blind side. So, up until fairly recently, we just seem to have been looking after adults. People over 18, people over 20 even, I think. Um, but they've started branching out now and we've got a group that supports teenagers, which is, um, which is useful for, because of, Say that again, Peter? 15 to 20, is it? Yes. Yeah, so late for teenagers. Um, uh, again, they meet once a, a week, um, this, this group do, and they're doing lots of different things. They're doing different things from the older people, uh, more into the technology, more into social media, more into, there's a lot going about, to be honest. Uh, but kids will be kids, and why not? It doesn't matter if you're visually impaired or not, you can still be a, a, a kid. Come. Okay, two new roles that were set up at the Halifax Cyber Line was um, a site support advisor and an activities coordinator. They sound quite flashed, aren't they? And they are. I'll let Angie tell you about the site support officer because she's in. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I am sharing the role of site support advisor with Jane Sellers. I don't know if anyone knows Jane. Jane, you know Jane? Yeah, she's had a lot of. Um, I come more from a social, um, social. What am I? Social. I don't know what I am. I'm from a more social background, and Jane is from an educational background. Um, with having lottery funding, we've managed to buy a lot of equipment or, and we're still in the process of buying new equipment for the um, site support centre. Um, this will be quite, quite, um, uh, quite techy as well. Um, the society have been very kind to me last year and um, sent me on the iClinic liaison officer training course um, in Birmingham, which was very insightful for me. Although I've worked Excuse with... The pod, insightful. Insightful. Um, although I've worked with um, sight-impaired people for 10 years, um, I don't think you ever stop learning and you never stop that self-reflecting and you never... Um, there's never an end to it. Um, but that has given me, as I say, more insight. Um, it's nice when people turn up. I'm 
quite a people person. I like a one-to-one -one kind of relationship where I can take the time with people and see what suits them, what's the best option for them, for them to make an informed choice but from a person-centered approach. Um, so that's about it. So yeah, that's up, that's up and running now. It's still early days. We had an opening last week for the Site Support Centre with the Menares and you know, lots of to-do, lots of cakes and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to kind of like um, embedding myself more into that role. It has been um, a bit split over the last few months but we have um, interviewed for the activities coordinator today and there look to be some good people who came for interview. So hopefully um, they will go into the activities coordinator role, which will develop the groups and develop the activities. Um, one of the things that Barry's mentioned is um, the, the information that was provided from people with sight impairment or their families within the community and I think that's very important to be able to understand those voices and to incorporate them as people um, to actively move on the society. Maybe they don't. Yeah. Sorry, there's a question. Yeah. Does anybody say Sorry? Not in Colladale, no. No, actually, we're just having, um, we just, are you, are you involved with that? No, I've just started out. Yeah. It's an idea. Yeah, it certainly is, and it's a good idea too. But someone mentioned in the team meeting last week about sport, you know, having, getting, getting the sporty side up and running, um, especially for the younger people. Um, Sue Moore's quite involved in that, isn't she? Uh, with the younger people and with the society on that side um, and she has lots of experience from working in education too, don't know if anyone knows her, uh, that's quite good. So yeah, it's, trying to do, it's about trying to develop groups um, that, uh, you know, maybe for and by the old one, isn't it, for and by, rather than be trying to tell people from a professional perspective what they need they can tell us more about what they need at run. Um, independent groups as well. So okay then yeah Peter. What was that sorry? Oh yeah we are being 36 at the moment aren't we? We moved next door from 34 into 36 and it's very nice that's how we managed to put up the um, site support century got an assessment room next door where we've got CCTVs and Zoom texts and readers and like I say we have a wish list at the moment whereby um, we could put forward what we felt were the best pieces of equipment that people might be, like to try. Uh, we've also got the social room and then we've got upstairs we've got the offices, we've got a training room which we're opening up for other people to come and train in. Uh, we're doing tra training in a couple of weeks on um, how we pr proper reading training. Like we've got the magnifiers now, we're developing the magnifying side um, so we can all develop our techniques in, um, for assessing how people can use the tools better. We've got the children's room up at the top as well, which was nice. Actually, at the moment, the Calderdale News uh, in one of the rooms upstairs. So, yeah, that's, that's um, it's, it's all up and, up, and, up and running. And I'm going to give you a pass back to Barry and see what the next, what, what we're looking at next. Right, so that's what's happening at the moment. Society for the Blind, um, but we're only a year and a half, nearly two years into this five year plan, so what's going to happen in the future, what's going to happen over the next five years? Well, over the next five years there's the activities coordinator, as Angie mentioned, and these people are going to expand the activities that um, are going to be available for visually impaired people. 
We're going to continue with the activities that we've got now, the groups that we've got, lunch groups and, uh, and the afternoon groups. They may change a little bit, I'd say that they're going to become more uh, supportive for independence. They're going to be promoting more independence with them. Rather than just come along, have a cup of tea, and we'll do it for you, they're going to, it's going to be focusing on this is how you can do this at home on your own. It's going to move more towards that. Um, the activities coordinator is going to look at doing other activities around Coldell. Could be sports, as some of you mentioned, go ball, it could be tandem riding, it could be theatre groups, um, it could be going much further afield. So it could be going on holiday, helping people to go on holiday on their own independently or through specialist organisations who help visually impaired people or disabled people who go on holiday. There's a, a caravan in North Wales that somebody lets out very cheap to visually impaired people. So they could help facilitate that. Um, so that's part of the future. Another part of the future is they have moved next door. They want to move again. It's only a temporary move. What they're ideally looking for, and this is just ideally, is somewhere in town near the bus station. Because they want somewhere central. We want to have somewhere central that visually impaired people can get to easier, but also that raises the profile so that everybody in Calderdale can get to see the high that side of the blind. What happens is we talk to people out and about sometimes and they go, no, I didn't know there was a society for the blind. How long did we say it's been going? 150 years? Yeah. <sighs> um, so we need to get the word out that visually impaired, that, that um, the blind society is there. And the best way to do that is to have it loud and proud and in the centre of town which is what we would ideally love to have. So that's our intention over the next five years, uh, up to the next five years, to find premises near the bus station. It'd be nice if it's all on one level, that'd be really useful. Somewhere big in area, we'll see. See how it goes. That's one of the things for the future. Okay, um, one of the things, <coughs> The biggest thing that came from this consultation was listen to visually impaired people, listen to their families, listen to the people who work with visually impaired people all the time. So that's what we at the Halifax Society for the Bible do. We're not going to just make things happen on our own. We're not just going to come up with the ideas and say, visually impaired people have got to do them, this is it, this is all we're offering you, this is yours. No, what we're going to do is say, we'll try this, see if it works, give us ideas about it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, tell us how it's working. <clears throat> give us ideas about other things that might work. Let us know what you need as a visually impaired person in Colville, as a, as a family member of visually impaired parents and people, as support for visually impaired people. Let us know what's working, what you need, what you'd like to see, and what you'd like to be done. So that's our, our blind side. Um, can I? Oh, hold on. Go on. Um, can I just say that the site support centre is open five days a week from 10 till 2.30. Um, we're still running basic social groups that are there five days a week. Um, they include two lunch groups as well. One of them is um, a satellite group over at Brick House. Um, so, yeah, I just thought I'd better fit that in just to let you know. 